Last week, an entire slew of prototype Pokemon designs were released by Helix Chamber, a group that is perhaps best described as a Pokemon history, research, and preservation group. And while many news outlets were quick to talk about the actual Pokemon designs, in particular this one which is blatantly Mecha Godzilla and this other one which is called Gorochu, what I saw many outlets not report on was the other slew of other cut Pokemon Red and Green version beta content that was released by Helix Chamber. This is by far the biggest release of beta Pokemon content since the release of the Pokemon Gold and Silver Space World demo ROMs last year, and indeed it was initially believed that there was a playable ROM of the source of this info, though that is unfortunately not the case. However, what we do have is an incredible amount of information that I'm hoping to essentially give the Sparknotes version of. So uh, if you want to go over to Helix Chamber and see their findings in full, the link is in the description. So today on Master Trainer, the channel I am helping you become a Pokemon Master, we're going over the weird and wonderful world of Pokemon Red and Green's newly found prototype content. So here's just a quick history before we start. Some may be a bit confused as to why I'm saying red and green and not red and blue versions. Well, while red and blue versions were the first Pokemon games we got in the West, in Japan the original games were actually Pokemon red and green versions, which had a few different map designs, different Pokemon sprites, and more glitches, most of which was changed nearly a year later with the special release of Pokemon Blue version in Japan. When it came time to bring these games over to the West, what we actually got were localized versions of the Japanese Blue version, but with the Pokemon location data of the Japanese Red and Green versions. And of course, these games weren't even originally called Pokemon. This series actually went through a wide variety of name changes, which makes sense as the original concept was pitched Nintendo originally all the way back in 1990, but wasn't actually released until 1996. Instead of being titled Pokemon and having two versions which featured Charizard and Venusaur respectively, these games were instead originally called Capsule Monsters, and later Capumon, and the mascot was Rhydon, which also according to developer interviews, was the first Pokemon ever designed. What many may find more interesting, however, is in regards to the cut Pokemon designs I mentioned earlier. Originally, instead of 150, there were 190 planned Pokemon. Presumably for the reasons of saving cartridge space, many of these were cut and instead we got Missing No, which I glitched Pokemon comprised of garbage data that I've done a video on already. While some later cut Pokemon designs would later find a way into the Pokemon Gold and Silver versions, or at the very least their betas, the designs what we're about to go over were all cut to never be seen again. Along with Mechagodzilla and Gorochu, we have what looks like a mix of sorts between Nidoking and Nidoqueen, a literal balloon, an abominable snowman that perhaps will have been a male counterpart to Jinx, a deer Pokemon that perhaps was later repurposed into Stantler though I'm not sure, and an elephant that perhaps may have influenced the Fanpy line. So just a quick note about Gorochu actually, uh, this was apparently a lost evolution for Pikachu, which, spite, which sparks the question. Was Raichu always going to be Pikachu's evolution, or is it going to be Gorochu, or is Pikachu going to have a split evolution? Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. There is also a crocodile that may have influenced the Totodile line, a potential evolution for Shelter, a shark that somewhat reminds you of Sharpedo, a seal-like Pokemon that perhaps became the cut Gen 2 starter Kurusu. Again, these are not all the beta designs and some Pokemon looked exactly the same as their final designs, but I still found these to be quite interesting. There are also some cut pre-evolutions or baby designs, which makes me wonder if Pokemon breeding was perhaps planned for red and blue versions, even though it ultimately wouldn't appear in the series to gold and silver versions. These include pre-evolutions for Zubat, Vulpix, Psyduck, Meowth, and Goldeen, along with some potential evolutionary forms such as a cut third stage for the Cubone line. Of further note are the cut original trainer designs. Initially, your player character may have been an adult, or at least a bit older than 10 as in the final release. The original character design, named Yuichi, wears suspenders and baggy pants, and in one sprite is quite muscular and wields a whip, which I'm sure would have gone over about as well as you'd expect in markets such as the US. In addition, there are also several cut trainer classes, including the student, Kapumon trainer, 
firefighter, and a variation of the female cool trainer. There's also several boss roles, including the Sylph Chief, which perhaps makes me wonder if in the original plot, the Sylph Company would have served a similar role as the Aether Foundation in the Sun and Moon games. There's also Shinjuku Jack, who's named after a district of Tokyo and was apparently a robot trainer, Ichitaru, which is a cut design for Brock, Umezu, and excuse me as I butcher all these by the way, but this was apparently your rival's little brother, and there's also gym leader Blaine, whose design was changed so late into development that this beta design was used for the Pokemon anime series. In addition, there were tons of cut overworld sprites and cries, but for the sake of time, let's skip straight to one of my favorite parts, maps. There were tons of either cut or radically changed maps. Now, the overall look of the Kanto region map was clearly finalized pretty early on, though the actual layouts of towns were not set in stone, as were the existence of landmarks. Notably, the SS Anne is not present in the early beta of Vermilion City map. Pallet Town was originally going to be little more than a couple of seed-sided villas, and also had some really neat signed grass graphics that I would have loved to have seen made their way into the final game. Those later changed more closely resemble its final layout, though for some reason your starting town still contained tall grass. Perhaps initially you would have gotten your starter before actually starting the game, and not from visiting Professor Oak, though this is just my own speculation. What I also find interesting is this if we take a look at some of the other beta cities. Now some, such as Celadon City, are filled with either garbage data tiles or placeholder buildings, but Cerulean City does have some neat features. Notably, instead of Pokemon centers, we have inns which means that healing perhaps would have originally occurred in much the same way as in other RPGs such as Final Fantasy. In addition, there's a sign for CVS, which if my knowledge of American pharmacy changed anything to go off of, was likely a pharmacy. Many maps serving purely as placeholders just had numbers carved into them to signify where they'd go on the overall map, such as the Beta Cinnabar Island. Others, such as Viridian City, were quite complete. Notice the actual roadblocks that are present, perhaps suggesting, along with rumors of a surfboard item, that HMs were originally not planned. The beta routes are also quite interesting. Like the town, some are empty and merely have placeholder graphics, while others, such as Route 1, shows route designs that would not feel out of place in a modern Pokemon game. There are also some really neat scrap dungeons. Cerulean Cave was originally going to be a much more confusing, puzzle-filled labyrinth, while every single gem has a different design from in the final game. Of note, the Pokemon League, or I guess Kapumon League, or merely the Champs Cup as it's called in the files from Helix Chamber, is shown to have just been one room in the large trophy, perhaps implying that the Elite Four were originally going to act similarly to either the Battle Tower in later games, or the Colosseums in the Colosseum games. And finally, before I leave off and cross my fingers that you'll subscribe and whatnot, I'll leave you with a bit of information that pertains to the beta versions of the Generation 1 Pokemon games, but is not actually from the Helix Chamber release. This is actually an unused music track from Pokemon Yellow version, and as far as I know, it is the only unused track left in any Gen 1 game, that's mostly complete anyways. It's been speculated that this would have played either during Victory Road or right before you challenged an Elite Four member. What do you think though? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll leave you with this.